Welcome back. I want to take a look at some networking products offered by AWS and look at how they react to or help us withstand failure within the AWS platform. Again, this is going to be entirely visual. I'll keep it as brief as possible. So let's jump in and get started. First, I want to focus on networking at the local level. So this is a particular AWS region and any availability zones within that region. So for this example, let's use US East 1. So we'll start with the region itself with two availability zones, A and B, and then the public zone within that region. Now let's assume for the sake of this example that we're hosting the Catagram application and we need that application to be resilient. And so we create a VPC together with subnets inside that VPC. And then of course, you're also going to need to have a VPC router together with an internet gateway. So these provide basic network functionality. Now VPCs are regionally resilient. They're created in a region and it would take a region failure to totally impact the service provided by that VPC. Certain gateway objects in the VPC, such as the VPC router and internet gateway, are also regionally resilient, so only a complete region failure could impact their service. If individual availability zones fail, then the VPC as a whole and these gateways will continue functioning within the working availability zones. Subnets which are running within that VPC are different though. Let's say that we have EC2 instances in both subnets, so the subnet in Availability Zone A and the subnet in Availability Zone B. Subnets are tied to the availability zone that they're located in, because one subnet is in one availability zone, it means that if the availability zone fails, then the subnet also fails. If a subnet fails, then logically any resources located in that subnet also fail. Now, the way that we get around this from a local regional perspective, how we build high availability into applications is by using an elastic load balancer. Elastic load balancers are regional services and the way that they work is by deploying nodes into specific subnets in each availability zone that you select while you're provisioning a load balancer. These nodes then direct any incoming connections through to instances or compute services running inside multiple subnets, and as such, inside multiple availability zones. So by using a load balancer, you're directing all incoming connections across multiple compute services running in different availability zones, meaning if an availability zone fails, then any other working availability zones can continue meeting our user demand. It means from the perspective of a customer, only a region failure can impact the service provided by a well-designed application running in multiple availability zones. Now, if the Catagram application were to use any public services, such as in this case, S3 or SNS, then they're also resilient across the region that they're in. And so it would require the entire region to fail for their service to be impacted. Really, for most server compute based applications, it's the subnets and availability zones which are the risk, and this can be mitigated by using load balancing across multiple availability zones within a region. Now, if your application needs private access to any public space services, you'll need to use interface endpoints. And if you do, you need to be aware that these are tied to a specific subnet in one availability zone. So failure of an availability zone will also mean the failure of an interface endpoint. But you can provision interface endpoints, one into each availability zone, and so deploying multiple interface endpoints will allow you to add high availability to any VPC-based application design. So this is your local resilience and DR capability. If you have a disaster within an availability zone, then your application can use alternative working availability zones within that region. Sometimes, though, all of the availability zones within a region or the region itself can have problems. And so your disaster recovery architecture and planning should involve using services in other regions to help mitigate this. And from a networking perspective, I want to quickly step through exactly how this looks. 
Now I want you to imagine the local architecture that I just stepped through, a VPC running in the US East 1 region. Now let's duplicate this over two additional regions. AWS have designed their global platform as a collection of regions. Each region is independent. A load balancer, for example, it runs in one region only. You can't have a global load balancer, and neither can a load balancer use instances in different regions. And what this means is that you actually have a collection of isolated regions together with separate fault domains and separate blast radiuses. Each region is isolated, separated, and independent. If a disaster strikes, for example, an asteroid hitting Australia, then only that one region would be impacted. The region in the UK, together with US East 1, would be unaffected assuming that it wasn't a big asteroid, but then we would have bigger problems to worry about. At a global level though, we can use other AWS products to change this architecture. We can keep the benefits, so the separate fault domains and blast radiuses, but join them together from a service perspective. And let's look at how that works. We keep the same three regions, but now we add Route 53, which is a global service. It has infrastructure globally and acts as one single global service with one database. So let's say that we're hosting the Catagram application and we have users connecting to a Route 53 DNS name. The DNS name can be configured to point at our regional endpoints which are actually running the Catagram application. These are regional endpoints, each of those is highly available itself as I showed at the start of the lesson. This actually creates a global application where each regional endpoint is being health checked. If any region is impacted by a disaster, then connections are just not routed to that endpoint. Instead, they're directed at all of the working regions. And this, from a networking perspective, is how you should build best practice systems, by treating them as isolated regional components, each with its own built-in high availability. And then globally, you define a single endpoint, a DNS name using Route 53, and using routing policies and health checks, you direct traffic at known working endpoints. With that being said though, that is the end of the lesson, so go ahead, complete the lesson, and when you're ready, I look forward to you joining me in the next.